sometimes the, the original uh, topic of this presentation was about security in Python 3.0, but uh, some time ago I realized that it is uh, so generic that we are going to apply it to our operating system. So, our generic is the type of different enough, but as far as what uh, uh, I'll be talking about, uh, briefly about security requirements, what uh, is something about uh, ties and what as I said, it is so generic that it uh, applies not only to, to ties and uh, then the main uh, part of the presentation uh, proposed by me and my team, the security model, and then about life cycle application in our models. Uh, so, uh, about security requirements. Uh, this is our reality, our everyday life. We store more and more uh, data on our embedded mobile devices like smart phones, smart TVs, smart watches. We want it to be secure and private. Uh, There is uh, much work done uh, in embedded devices, especially in mobile devices like uh, Android phones, like, uh, iOS phones, with, uh, with security with privileges. And um, it's not present on uh, our desktop distribution, distribution of our desktop systems. For example, this basically the same application. Uh, tried to be installed on uh, Ubuntu and on Android. Uh, what's the difference? The difference is when we click install, uh, Ubuntu is asking us about our password to uh, authorize the process of uh, installation. But on, for example, this example is Android, but it's uh, common to uh, most of mobile systems. Uh, it's asking about privileges granted to the applications. So, when you install on desktop, uh, the run software uh, is acting on behalf of the system. It can do uh, everything we could do uh, sitting uh, at our keyboard. Mobile devices which supports privileges, the application is constructed in many different ways. For example, about resources it can, it can touch or not, and so on and so on. Um, so, uh, there is some conflict because the, the, between the granularity of these privileges, for example, if you want to restrict uh, uh, access to Contacts or maybe reading contra uh, contacts, uh, editing contacts, uh, uh, and so on. And uh, the conflict of the usage and administration of such devices. So, uh, this model was uh, originally designed for Python operating system. Uh, and talking about Python, so we know what it all came from. But as I said at the beginning, it is so generic that it can be applied to every Linux distribution. Uh, first of all, Python was uh, designed for embedded devices. Uh, mainly smart devices, smartphones, smartwatches, but it's a normal Linux distribution. Uh, it's developed by open source community. Uh, at the moment, the main, the main uh, effort, the main is made uh, by something but uh, it's open source. You can go on Tizen port and download all the sources and put on the device of your choice, for example, um, Android, Raspberry Pi, and so on. Uh, this is where you can see the uh, Tizen device in the wild, so there are some. Uh, some IBI systems, mobile phones, smartwatches, and more. And uh, uh, everybody can join this 
this community by um, installing Tizen uh, on their device. Uh, there are two Tizens uh, at the moment. Uh, Tizen of series uh, 2.x and it's commercially um, deployed on many devices, uh, mainly by Samsung. And there is uh, next generation Tizen 2.0, which is still in development. Uh, it's, uh, as I said, it's completely open source. It can be run on devices. You can go, uh, you can buy in every electronic shop. Uh, and it supports our new modern dedicated security model I will talk about now. So. Uh, on every operating system, not only Android, not only mobile, but uh, this is what I think about before you start uh, embedding. But Servicio, Ubuntu, Pandora, uh, any other distribution. You have some services, you have some resources you probably want to protect. Uh, this may be uh, email, camera, networking, uh, and many more. Uh, what uh, mobile devices especially uh, are proposing is connecting these resources with privileges. Uh, so basically the things you can do with these resources or services. For example, if you have email, then you may want to just read them or send emails, maybe preview contacts, camera networking, so on and so on. Um, but, uh, as I said at the beginning, if you install application, for example on Ubuntu, it uh, acts on your behalf uh, to full extent. So if you download a random application from the internet, maybe uh, some sort of game or calculator, it can read your emails, it can uh, SSH to your remote uh, hosts if you uh, have your uh, keys on it, uh, and so on. So, uh, we have to put some access control. So, not every application will uh, have access to our services and resources. This is what is uh, done on most of mobile systems nowadays, but uh, first of all, uh, not all of them, and uh, not so generically that it could be uh, put on desktop distributions. And here is our dedicated model, which supports this scenario. Uh, it consists of three pillars of security. Uh, first of them is discretionary access control, Next is uh, SMAC, it's one of the things, it's SMAC uh, and dedicated uh, user space, uh, demon, preview checker, Senara, uh, which was uh, already mentioned by, by Joseph today, and I will uh, tell you much more about it. Uh, but, uh, what we use the three of the pillars in our security mode. First is DAC. Uh, as most of you know, if you don't know what is DAC, then you, you know what is DAC. It's the classic uh, Unix uh, privileges, uh, not privileges, but maybe access control system in Unixs uh, from uh, 40 or 50 years ago. Uh, basic types of access is uh, reading, writing, executing resources. Uh, the main, uh, main thing about it is that uh, the owner um, uh, manages uh, access to the resources. Um, it is used to separate users. Uh, next is Mac. Uh, it's one of the sense uh, in kernel. Uh, maybe uh, if you don't know what it is, maybe uh, I see some things in 
the service uh, should know if the information about the uh, location in this example should be granted to the application. But uh, how, uh, how does it know? So it contacts NARA and sends the credentials of uh, the client, uh, its application in, the, in this example, to Tsunara. And Tsunara knows the answer. So um, this application is uh, identified by the service. Uh, the credentials are sent to Tsunara, and Tsunara uh, returns um, uh, um, what to say to application if the, uh, if the service should grant uh, access to the location or not. Tsunara uh, has a database which can be queried uh, in order to find the answer, and we can. Uh, use some extensions, for example, pop-ups to, to ask whether it is the access should be entered or not, uh, and so on. Uh, so, uh, how it now knows all these answers? Uh, first of all, it has some built-in uh, same defaults. Uh, next, uh, installed applications come, come with manifest. If you use Android uh, as developers of applications, uh, it may uh, sound familiar to you. Uh, next, privacy manager, uh, which allows to uh, alter the policy on runtime, and so this administrator, because uh, Tizen is multi-user system, so there is a role of administrator which can uh, alter the the policy. Uh, so. What is the life cycle of the application? Uh, but uh, first, I need to uh, tell you about Security Manager. It's also user space uh, service, which uh, manages uh, all uh, steps in the life cycle of the application. Uh, basically, it uh, helps with installing applications. So the uh, DAC rules, the SMAC rules should be uh, populated uh, by uh, installing application. It um, applies security context by running application. I will, uh, I will tell more about it in a minute. Uh, managing security policies, for example, reading uh, those manifests of uh, applications or um, Allowing privacy manager to, to alter uh, to alter the policy, and it also manages uh, users. Uh, so, first step in the life cycle of application is, of course, installation. It, it's um, 
in two parts. First, is simply unpacking the file, but it's uh, not a big deal. Uh, the, the next part is uh, secured by a security manager, which reads manifest, so it knows what privileges should be granted to the application. So it can populate a scenario database, it can uh, label the files on the uh, file system and uh, create DAC rules, DAC permissions. Mm -hmm. Next, uh, the launching of application. Uh, it's done by launcher, but it uh, cooperates uh, with, uh, with security manager and Sonara to uh, to properly spawn the process, to properly apply the security context to the newly spawned process. Uh, so, first of all, it checks what effective groups uh, have to be applied to, to the process and uh, what smart label should be uh, applied to this, to this process. Uh, so, uh, how does it work in general? Uh, we have, as, a, as an example before, some application, uh, for example maps, uh, which wants to know the location of the device. Uh, so, it comes to the GPS and asks uh, about the location. GPS asks another and does the answer. How does it uh, look in more details? Uh, this is our applications and the credentials uh, which are identified, which are identified, identifying the application are uh, first of all uh, user, next is a smart label of the application and mm, if there is uh, also a third part of the triple uh, privilege which is uh, bound to the service. So, we have a uh, maps application which is, uh, for example, user uh, app um, maps. We have a UID which is uh, 1001 and we have privilege with, which is in this example Tizen.org privilege location. This triple is uh, forwarded to Tsunara. Tsunara uh, has its uh, database, has its, um, has its plugins and can answer the question if the service should uh, provide the answer to the application. This is um, a demo. You can uh, go to the K building and see it live. Uh, we have application in this example contacts, uh, which um, we can um, edit our contacts. Uh, but you can see here that we have the uh, privileges contact read and contact write. Uh, first of them is uh, set for allow and the second one is set to ask you. So if you want to read the contacts with the application contacts, uh, it can be done. But if you want to edit the contacts, you will be provided with a pop-up uh, asking you if this application, you can see the uh, smart label of this application here, the user app uh, contacts client, run by user identified with this ID and trying to access this privilege. And you can answer uh, this, this question and let the application uh, the application to the to or not. Um, my time is up, so I just quickly tell you that there is also another um, scenario. Uh, direct access to the resources when you don't have uh, any service governing the resource. For example, you have a GPS service, but so sometimes you have uh, file resources uh, which have to be accessed uh, directly. So there is only one chance uh, to uh, control the access. Uh, 
uh, I mean by launching the application. So the uh, dev camera uh, file system resource is uh, owned by a group camera users. So the application, uh, in this example camera, should be in effective group of camera users to have access to this device and it is applied, this group is applied on uh, the start on spawning the application. Uh, we have some uh, bonuses uh, also. Um, if, if your service is running on device, then you don't, you don't have anything to do, just write a uh, um, proper config file to, to have uh, Dbus uh, protecting your application with uh, cooperation with Sinara. There are some other tools uh, for auditing, for networking, uh, access control, and uh, also containers which uh, upgrade uh, security. And this is it. Uh, have you have any time for questions? Yeah, I think we have a couple of minutes. <coughs> Three minutes left. So if anyone, thank you, Alexander. No? So in order for the scenario system to make sense, you need to, um, well, safely identify the application, right? So you need to make sure that the Maps application does not leak its credentials so that other applications can, well, identify themselves as the Maps application. So I suppose you need a system like Smack to assign these labels during installation because otherwise, you know, well, if you can't you know, safely identify the application, then, well, you, you cannot use the system properly, I suppose. So are there any alternatives? to the Smack system to still make use of Sonara? Uh, I think so. Uh, first of all, you can uh, use other LSM to label the process of the application. I think uh, you can use uh, SE Linux for this. Uh, maybe you could also use C groups, groups maybe. Uh, uh, Slara is so generic that it accepts uh, <coughs> any unique string for the client uh, part of credentials. Q. In Tizen, it's smart label. In a system of your choice, it could be, I don't know, maybe a uh, path to the executable binar, maybe C group, maybe uh, um, Linux uh, label. So it's anything that could uh, identify your application to differentiate, differentiate it from uh, another one. Right, yeah, if such a thing exists. How's, uh, how does that compare to, say, Policy Kit? Um, policy Kit was... Um, um, to it, it, didn't meet our performance uh, <coughs> needs because it was too slow to manage basically uh, all the, the security checks in our application. If uh, policy kit is meant to uh, provide security checks interactive with pop-ups, but we have almost all in API calls uh, managed, uh, checked by its now. So policy kit uh, wouldn't, um, couldn't do that uh, because it was too slow. Any more questions? We can have one final question now. Hi. My question may be stupid, but uh, if the goal is to take the security model of phones and take it to computers, wouldn't that be too much of a shift in security models for the user to take into account? Wouldn't, be too, wouldn't it be too restrictive for the apps, for example? Wouldn't the user be harassed by all these permissions? Um, it's 
hard to answer because it's all up to user. It's up to what user expects uh, uh, from uh, from their system. For example, I would want my system to protect my emails, my camera, and so on, just like my phone does. But uh, it's it's up to to to, to user. Okay, I think time's up. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you.